Okay, right back into uh, the encounter. We're going to land on a polar equidome and this is a two and a half score mission. So boy, boy, let's get ready for some rather unpleasant fights. Two and a half scores is the hardest mission that we've done so far. We gotta destroy enemy blocking forces, secure the facility, and then afterwards, I think even transport uh, the the cargo to uh, to the uh, target location. So that's a relatively long mission. And uh, the only thing that works for us is essentially having the. Uh, ECM from uh, the Raven, which will hopefully kind of stabilize our position here. High ground here could work out well. I think this here might be the first lance that we're fighting against. Uh, it's a light mech, as indicated with initiative four, two medium mechs, three medium mechs. Okay, so far so good. Yeah. Let us move up here On the move. and we got a Wolverine, we got a Centurion Spider, which is not a problem, we can deal with that, but we got to deal with the Wolverine and with the Centurion, quite frankly. So let's start with some damage, a guy has quite a bit of armor. All right, this here looks like a perfect spot. Still very much covered, high ground. Got almost everything at uh, 80%. We're looking at 920 armor. That is a lot. Thankfully, after that first south, by. we removed some of it. 85% hit. We're now at 770 armor. You can just see <clears throat> how tanky these larger, medium-sized mechs are, right? Like, we've given him um, a full-fledged attack from all of the mechs, and he's still very much standing. I can't really do that. I want to save some... Uh, some of our energy, uh, some of our heat, rather. We'll go. I start the moves up, and although it's just two hits, it's better than nothing. Good. We got most of uh, the frontal armor reduced. They've got a lock on me. Spider's yeah. moving up what can I do you for? and tries to do us dirty. We're countering that by essentially moving back. Uh, into the woods and uh, hunkering down. Now, all of the other mechs are currently invisible, which means we have the element of surprise. Definitely got to deal with the spider sooner or later. But for now, I'll let the enemy mechs uh, go, uh, go on first. The Raven damage took almost light. no damage, so that was a successful round. Centurion here could be a fantastic target for us, because he uh, does not have a 40% reduction. Forest 20% and uh, Brace is another 20%. Aye, aye. Good, how about we're jumping up? Getting a little bit closer, next turn we're just going to approach him even further and for now just fully unload. That worked rather well. Okay, still covered by the ECM 
And we might we might be able to really target the left torso here. If we're doing our, uh, our job right, that could get uh, rid of an LRM-10 and a medium laser. Eh, not good enough. Got something you want done? All right, moving back into the forest, the 20% damage reduction is what I'm after because very soon we're going to take quite a bit of damage. For now, let's just fully hit that Centurion. Spider calls us out. He's now in the middle of our... He's now in the middle of our zone here and one of the things that we could do theoretically speaking is move up to here Moving to position. and that potentially makes it difficult for them to uh, to really follow up uh, let's do an active uh, pro Got a lock. the spider is affected by it Yes, Commander. And by cleverly jumping in the back here, that's a full attack in the uh, into the back of uh, the Centurion. Not that I think we'll be able to fully kill it with that, but there's a chance at Firing least. Eh, not enough damage. But we got a sensor lock going. And I want to be mindful with that. Moving behind uh, this uh, obstacle. That means the Centurion can only use his long-ranged missiles in order to attack us. All committed. And the spider is taking quite a bit of beating. Blackjack takes almost no damage because the LRMs alone are not enough damage. And by thinking about it, might as well just move over and kill the uh, spider. He barely was in range, but we were kind of behind that mountain ridge. So we have a really solid position here. Meanwhile, the enemy by. does not. I'm wondering, I'm wondering. Something I can do. Uh, that's not good enough. I mean, we could move up here, but I almost feel it is better to... Hmm. Although... Awaiting orders. If we were to move up here, like, that would be a really, really solid hit. But we would also expose ourselves. This, on the other hand, would keep us in... In a pretty good location because we're still behind the mountain ridge uh, but we would be able to hit this guy i think that's what we're going to do there is a chance that we're destroying the leg pretty decent chance and there's even a chance that we're destroying the torso good. and that means we are protected for now got four evasion blips back here which i think is enough for us to tank I've been sensor 
Good. We got one sensor lock over here. Waiting for orders. On the Vindicator. I think it's fine. We really don't need to do anything. Let's just reserve. The worst thing that could happen uh, towards the Vindicator is that they will use uh, their uh, LRMs on it. Ready for orders. I mean, what we could do... Listen. I could be a bit sneaky here. All right. Trying to get... Uh, I was thinking if we're just going with Vigilance, but it's a 40% damage reduction. And we only got two attacks from them. Plus one evasion blip, and we'll get our entire attack towards that Centurion. I think I'm still going to do that. Uh, he has now essentially become the tank. And the Centurion were just going to unload. All right, large laser are gone. Centurion is really taking a heavy beating here. Fair enough. Fair enough. That right, was center torso hit. Commander. All right. Confirmed. Moving up. Fire starter is. Very much back in business. We could try to kill him from behind. I'll try to save some heat though. So let's just unload with what we have. Pilot injured. He killed uh, the entire middle section, uh, the entire right torso. So the Centurion is up for grabs. Blackjack moves up. And this could be a kill. Potentially. There we go. Pilot incapacitated. So far we've outplayed them quite a bit. And we got the initiative advantage. Got a Wolverine here. What's up, boss? I'm wondering. <clears throat> So let's move up and con uh, and really focus a bit more on that Wolverine. On. Rear on. He has left his rear armor exposed, which is a huge mistake. And I would feel absolutely bad if we wouldn't punish that. Vindicator moves up, this time with a precision strike. That reduces the initiative of the, the Wolverine even further. Fire starter moves up. Really nice potential kill here. Let's see how you like this. Fantastic. We got a bit of retaliation, but that is fine. We still had an evasion blip and we were fine. All right. Moving into high ground. 20 hit points. Okay, fair enough. Targeting rear armor. There we go. Enemy destroyed. He left his back all the way exposed. That was just incredibly stupid. Good. Raven moves up, raises up here. Yes, Commander. Fast starter sprints up, also completely being invisible. 
Centurion cannot do anything. We're not even getting a counter shot. That is just how strong that ECM is. And now it's time to hit the Centurion a bit more. This guy has an AC-10 and LRM-10s. Good to go. I copy. Vindicator moves up. Confirm. Good. Same Good deal. Go. Raven firm. moves up. Braces. Standing by. Firestarter jumps over, raises as well. Let him move. He really cannot do much. Hogbite begins to hopefully shoot him down. Good. He is already losing most of his armor. We're just standing still for now. We can actually precise uh, precision strike him. Target acquired. By the way, that's the second Centurion, meaning there's a good chance that we can loot one of these guys, and that would be absolutely fantastic. Good. Raven moves up. Time to switch from defense to offense. We're going to take all of the shots that we can. Firestarter moves up, this time another precision shot, and we're finishing him. There we go. That's a solid first engagement. So far, the two and a half school missions are doable. To be honest, though, <clears throat> we had a really wow. nice engagement with that hill here. So playing all of uh, the terrain to our advantage, plus the absolute overpowered ECM, way. is a fantastic way to do a mission. No problem. On my way. Their weight class exceeded ours quite a bit. Typically, you're not fighting against uh, more than one equivalent uh, match Roger for that. you. Normally, um, how it would work is you would um, fight against kind of a weaker lance and maybe a second weaker lance, but not two um, strong lances at the same time. This here, however, Moving to it, uh, since it is two and a half skulls, <clears throat> excuse me, since it is two and a half skulls, the enemies are higher than we are. Most of the pilots are more experienced. Most of uh, the mechs are at least e equivalent uh, rating or higher. And you've seen it. It was three medium mechs plus a small mech against two small, two medium. And in all fairness, our medium mechs were rather on the lower end of the spectrum of medium mechs. Locking in coordinates. Affirmative. Good. We now got a transport of LR resources. APCs. Ensure that all of them hopefully leave unscathed. The good part about the ECM is it also affects our allied units. So unless they completely mess it up and just run away, we should be fine. All right, not sure what is happening with the other APCs here. Oh, wow, one is stuck. Well, that is fantastic. Normally, there are not a lot of pathing problems Confirmed. in Battletech, but yeah, sometimes it is what it is. Let's hope that this guy here will find his way out, because you need all four of them uh, to to go to the target zone in order to make a count. 
Well, slowly but surely he finds his way. Move order received. On the move. No problem. I don't like that half of the convoy is all the way up there. Whilst this guy here is just chilling in the back, minding minding their own business. Let's move. Move order confirmed. All right, this is the escort zone. We've not yet even engaged with enemies. This here could be a nice hill to fight. But it seems that the way is even moving further, so could be a situation where we need to uh, travel even further. Uh, still map over here, that's not the end of the map. Alright. Moving to position. We'll go. Location confirmed. Good. Everybody's uh, moving. That's fine. Fantastic. I think we even get a bonus if all of them would survive. Copy that. With our cover, there's also the option that we just, like, run away from this mission. Alright, fantastic, so far so good. Three out of four of these guys are already there. And not a single enemy. I get you on the move. I want to fight at this ridge here if possible. Way. Fantastic. Protect the convoy. Ensure that all of the convoy units survive. Well, we can do that. I don't think that these guys here will need any more protection. All right. Coordinates received. This here is a fantastic Confirm. spot, with the exception of it way. being a bit rougher terrain. Okay, I almost Morning. figured as much. Enemy sensor lock detected. So what do we have? Affirmative. Okay, okay. Commander. Uh, we're not using the fire starter. Instead, let's move over here and see what we're dealing with. A griffin and an unknown mech. Okay, well, well. I think we can take the guys here. Awaiting orders. Affirmative. There's definitely a positive of fighting them on rough ground. Not for us, but if they would come a little bit closer, we can knock them over. The problem that I see is at least one of them has sensor lock. And we're again fighting against similarly Warning. dangerous uh, group. Alright, Blackjack here is going to be a bit of an issue. Uh, we need to pull him back. And if possible, that yep. Griffin there...
if possible, Stand that Gryphon there. I would actually like to engage on it. Hmm. Nah, not jumping in. Let's wait. The only downside is we're going to be shot once. Potentially from the Gryphon here. He was just running in. He was Commander. just running in. So what we can do is we could move back just to here. That means with the exception of the blackjack, everybody else is fine. And we're actively probing so that this I've guy here is losing line. his evasion blips. Now this is the counter attack that I was talking about. Figured that that would happen. Another griffin. Griffins are pretty strong as well. All right, move in here. Good. We're definitely going to take Vigilance. And now it's time for a bit of payback. LRM sent a PPC. The LRMs will be nasty, so they sit in the upper right shoulder, as you can see. Like right up here. Um, but they are not nasty from that close up. Similarly, the PPC is not that nasty. We could use a precision strike though, so might as well take upper right shoulder. All right, overall okay. We're out of we're out of LBX ten ammunition. Twenty percent damage reduction, but still some damage that we've taken. So gotta be careful uh, there. Awaiting orders. All right, entire enemy team has moved, so we're fine. Fire starter moves down. And just for the purpose of making a point, let's fully unload into his back. Okay, that was not bad. Got something you want done? All right, that will be a good position. Another precision strike. Fully loaded. And let's alpha strike him down. LRM crit, which is exactly what we were looking for. Got a lock on me. Good. Vindicator is the same problem that we had beforehand. Aye, aye. All right, moving up to protect the blackjack from being too exposed. And let's hit the griffin. Firestarter jumps up. We're going to kick in some vigilance. I really don't want the Firestarter to be hit. It doesn't have um, or hit hard. It doesn't have too much armor. And we're just going to continue our 
our action from from the front. Left arm is gone. And we'll wait for now. Good. I figured that that would come. We were sensor locked. Ready to get it on. And it's not a bad move. On my way. Just restabilize. That way the whole LRM tends almost deal no damage. Blackjack moves up and let's try to hit him. If we hit him really well, three hits in, in the center four, so Griffin will even be down. That was one hit in the torso. One hit from behind. All right, fire starter moves up. Precision strike. Fully unloads into the back. Targeting for an alpha strike. Target neutralized. Griffin down. Fantastic. Now the Raven is sensor locked. That is a problem, but not a problem that we couldn't fix. Back into the woods. Bracing done. Going to take some rockets, but that is minus forty percent damage, so That's we're fine. Sticking on reserve. Good. So we still got the black check and we got the vindicator. Vindicator moves back up. High ground attack. Well, let's start. Good. A couple more hits. And the Vindicator, unfortunately, is sensor locked again. Raven. Can move up to here. And let's take it out on the Locust. That's the guy who is sensor locking. He'll not survive this round. We're going to take one hit uh, onto the Vindicator. Or maybe more. Waiting for orders. Now that they charged in. Roger that. Hold back and forth might be over. Let's hit the Locust. There we go. That was worth it. And we do have a good position there. Unfortunately, Hogbite does not, and we really need to respect kind of his situation here. Commander. Firestarter moves up. Firestarter. Jumps over. And let's hit the back of the Griffin. 
Central Griffin back. Got the angle. Taking the shot. Alright, we can finish him next turn. Just to make sure that we're fine. We don't need the firepower at the moment. Awaiting orders. Aye, aye. All right, this guy's already down to initiative number two, which means we only got to worry about that one griffin here and what they can or cannot do. Meaning, if we move back down here. Hogbite is safe. We're active probing. That takes this guy's uh, remaining um, blips almost completely away yes, Commander. and we're reserving now only two rather tanky mechs are in front yep and we very much survived that one receiving you and now the name of the game must be to not let the griffin survive All right, full on, all out, onto the Griffin's back. Copy that. starter does exactly the same. Target lock on enemy rear. Take that. How is that guy still alive? Seriously, how? Hmm. We have any weak spot from the front? Potentially not. This here should be fine. I'm just wondering. Three hit points. All right. Well, that is unfortunate, to say the least. Good. He is now three potential targets. One hit. Hits a leg, dances immediately. Well, F you, buddy. Yes, command. Position confirmed. Raven moves up and hopefully Locked puts this guy to sleep. Hogbite is slightly damaged One and injured. I potentially shouldn't have done that last move. All right, time to hit the griffin over here. Taking the shot. Yep, that was a nasty, nasty hit. Luckily, we're okay. Commander. I copy. Good. Time to pay back. Okbite stands up. Unfortunately, with one leg, things are looking a bit more dire. Operational. Leg damaged. Speed reduced. Yeah, speed substantially reduced, so can't really aye, get aye. to them. Roger that. Starter moves a tiny bit back. Gets in that one shot. Good to go. Confederate 
Raven moves up. Let's continue to like push this guy. And I would say we're just reserving. Let him come. We have a good defensive position. One hit, but we're fine. He now has exposed himself so that we can actually start hitting his back. It was a huge mistake. And we immediately killed him. All right, with the exception of that one little misplay, with the exception of that one little misplay, I think everything else went uh, well. I potentially will make that an entire own episode because the mission took a lot of time. And two and a half skulls are doable. And we'll get 25 loot on top of it, so pray for some good salvage, guys. Good, we got 100,000. We unfortunately lost the leg here and need some repair, plus Hogbite is out for now. Oh, oh, fantastic. So we got an entire Centurion AL. That's a good one. Four laser hard points and two um, rocket hard points plus three support hard points. That is really good. We got the Griffin on the other hand, two out of three already in possession. So Centurion, yes. Griffin also, yes. And there is even one more Wolverine available. We have any unique weapon? No, I think one of our settings was no rare loot, so can't really get that. Oh, hell yeah. Fantastic. Good, we got salvage uh, loot worth more than 12 million um, credits which is fantastic just what we need and here's the good news like yeah it sucks that the blackjack is out of order but um, one can even make an argument that we're uh, essentially just building up the new max and uh, completely upgrading to kind of that high medium uh, level 55 tons, the Griffin. The Griffin is a beast. One of uh, the strong, arguably one of the strongest mechs in the entire medium roster. So, what I would want to do here is maybe get rid of uh, the Vulcan. I wish I could send it to storage, but since it is injured, I can't. So, off you go. We do have another Vulcan if we want to. I never really made it work um, here, but the Griffin, fantastic mech. Centurion, 50 tons, and we got another Hunchback here, kind of our laser boat. Um, now the question is, whom is the Centurion replacing? Can't send the Blackjack to storage. Could make a bold move and send the Vindicator to storage and essentially like go with with Firestarter or Raven, uh, plus three medium max. Uh, that's not a not, not a bad idea. Damn it, we can't send anyone to storage since they're not repaired. Well, that stinks because taking them out of storage will again take some time. I really, really want him. Are we putting the Raven into storage? We've already seen enough Raven play. See, 
The Raven trivializes a lot of the missions uh, just due to the electronic warfare. But I promised on the other hand that I wanted to show you like good solid gameplay. And I think that this here is trivializing it uh, too much. The ECM is just an incredibly strong um, an incredibly strong tool if you know what you're doing. So for now, we're sending him to storage. I know, shocker. Who would have thought? Saiken is making it a bit more difficult for himself. Redford could get a bit more unsteady threshold. That's not bad. But having one of the special abilities isn't bad either. Okay, cool. Hogbite can uh, get one of the special abilities. Mox, I would like that extra help. Definitely, because we e pretty easily can die. Let's get to a 4444 uh, setup before we go for the special abilities. When I learn something, then it is really that it's rather dirt cheap to go for individual abilities at the beginning. They will become more expensive, but having kind of that base of four-ish uh, always gives you another kind of nice perk, and then you can uh, go on. Good. So Hogbite could do a lot of uh, things. Since he's typically the one ending up in the bigger mechs in front, I figured we might want to give him Bulwark. Uh, that is a passive that allows you to always uh, guarantee 40% reduction rather than 20% reduction. If you two do have cover and guard it together, it even reduces it by um, 60%. And that is just absolutely fantastic. It makes it make so much more tanky. So that in itself is a wonderful ability, like one of my favorite ones, hands down. Oftentimes I find myself going Bulwark and Ace Pilot, and you will see why Ace Pilot in a second. Um, when when we're that far not in a second when we're that far but yeah the, this combination is just phenomenal multi-shot i tend to uh, started to appreciate more and more uh, specifically with certain builds so we will have someone with multi-shot and i'm even considering taking someone with sensor lock um, so yeah that is great now off to the mech bay and since we already have a long uh, a long mission might as well make it an hour to make it worth your time so a couple of things that repair takes ages but it is what it is vindicator also needs a repair one day okay fire starter needs a repair two days okay good now hunchback just takes a lot of time to even get straight so of course we're going to do that last which means the Hunchback currently um, just takes a lot of work to get done. These three here will be done in 10 days and I need something that is sort of deployable fast because at, as it stands, we don't have a full uh, lance that we can deploy because all of uh, the covered mechs come empty and not uh, full. So we're starting with the Griffin. Griffin, a fantastic, just abnormally a uh, good uh, mech for medium uh, for medium sized mech. Um, one of my favorite uh, chassis, so I am super happy that we have it in this playthrough. We're going to uh, see that it has almost 15 tons uh, when you like fully uh, uh, clock it up. And we do have the remedium lasers that we put in. There's more that we can put in, of course. And it is perfectly viable you could run uh, the whole thing as a LRM boat uh, kind of making it a long-ranged machine but you could also be cheeky and just plug in some SRMs to essentially give it that firepower and just look at the firepower two, 219 and that is without the light laser that we still can put in which makes it a 239 just fantastic 
the question is do we maybe have too much tonnage how much does the narc beacon now yeah, that's also three tons okay so ammunition wise if we were to go with that two buckets of uh, srms will not last for a really long time but it will uh, go for a bit so and now we do have the issue that we're potentially packing just too much into it with later equipment it works uh, but for now we got to be reasonable it's potentially going to be one of our main mechs oh boy we're already at 19 days 15 more serviceable good and let's go with uh, some heat sinks So heat efficiency would essentially be 40 to 60 because the small laser usually does not count. And that would be okay overall. So now one can make the decision uh, to drop a ton of SRM ammunition and uh, keep all of that or drop something else. What does the store say do we have srm ammunition in here like half srm ammunition yeah sometimes you find like these half ammunitions just to save some tonnage but yeah we don't have that okay cool so that's not too bad i am also looking for a sort of good deal in terms of days we would end up in this uh, build with uh, an overarching 200 damage. We could go for an LRM. The problem with the LRMs that I'm always having is even, let's say just for the sake of making that argumentation, we have an LRM 15, okay? Like what does that get us? Hmm. Since we do have an LRM 15 plus plus, it's not that bad. But tendentially you would want to have extended range lasers just to have a bit higher range. Medium lasers plus LRMs just don't go very well together. But I take note that the LRM definitely could be an option. Unfortunately, we don't have like really solid SRM pluses at this point. Elsewise, it would be even way more damage. So these little pluses indicate lost tech weapons. And yeah, we don't have that. This here is a nice weapon, by the way. UAC 20. Very nice, close uh, ranged weapon. Nothing that we can mount on anything at the moment. But it is a good weapon. Good. We're just putting... The armor is slightly bit down, but yeah, overall, like this here looks fantastic. With the comm system, it's one more day, but yeah, we're going to go for the comm system just because this here is a sturdy mech, our heaviest mech at this point, and having that extra comm system definitely wor uh, is worth it. So confirm. Yes, please. Logged and Good. Be Griffin is fine, uh, which. Boy, we definitely need some more tech points. Like, all of that is great, but it just takes so long to build these guys. Good. One last uh, task is the Centurion. Again, Centurion, like, fantastic tonnage that you do have available. Has a couple of uh, missile hard points, which is great is a wonderful wonderful um, overall uh, armor so certainly an interesting mechan i'm wondering to which degree since we do have so much tonnage available i am wondering if we make him kind of a long range build 
Bear with me for one second. So, arch laser. Okay, fair enough. Let's take what? Five tons. Okay. We got LRMs. Give it enough LRMs because they tend to run out quite fast. And this here is 120 rounds, so that's 10 shots, not even 8 shots, that's 16 shots. Well, okay, good. LRM 5, LRM 20. So here's an interesting part, a little trick for LRMs. They tend to weigh 2.5 tons, but... Actually, the way that's implemented is the LRM-5s weigh 2, the LRM-10 weigh 5, then the LRM-15s weigh 7, and the LRM-20s weigh 10. So if you just want to edge out that extra bit of um, damage um, uh, for tonnage, it's better to have the LRM-5s and 15s together instead of two LRM-10s. Just, po uh, just pointing that out. So can put some more LRMs in. And overall, the heat efficiency is this very, very calm. Got a couple of medium lasers, a couple of small lasers. So even close up, like with a large laser and all of the other lasers, he would not be that bad but it, there, there would be a substantial heat problem overall so what we can do is like making it a moderate uh, arranged attacking mech and i mean if it's such a heat problem can we buy machine guns So we could buy two machine guns if we were interested in it. Question is, do we really need that? Or alternatively, are we essentially just slapping in two medium lasers for good measure and then another heat sink and we're, we're at like what? Pretty hot mech, but one that could hold uh, its own if needed. So that generally doesn't look too bad. Good, so if we're just chipping off little bits of armor here and there, not much, still good enough. The idea behind that build is we do have around 150 firepower on ranged attacks, which is good. That is actually quite excellent for the size of the mech. We have quite a few, uh, we have quite a bit of ammunition as well. And from a heat perspective, as long as he's on range, there's really nothing happening. We can have that sweet, sweet spot uh, on 270 uh, meters, around 270 meters, yep. Where all of the weapons still could engage and where we could transition him from kind of a ranged attacker towards more of a medium attacker. Even, by the way, even if all of uh, these would um, essentially be empty, he would still have a large laser and two medium, uh, two moderate lasers. That's like 50, almost 100 damage. Not fantastic, but for something that is uh, for an LRM boat, that is not bad. It's, you, you could go like all in and let's just do that for a moment. That would be five tons additionally. Minus two, minus four. You could, you could 
theoretically pull that off, but I would question how fast you would run out of ammunition. So you could go entirely onto LRM um, 15s, essentially ignore the large laser. Essentially ignore the large laser, trade a heat sink because you're now more heat efficient for more LRM ammunition. And that's potentially kind of the more extreme variant. Um, I would even go as far as to say, why not? Put in the small lasers. and try to work with that because um, this one here would still have one laser um, but as soon as the lrms are gone it could um, it could switch to the small lasers we do have a ranged fire capability of 175 but a lot of stability damage on top of it so that's not too bad and we could we could go with some more, uh, some extra damage via the small lasers. Heat efficiency is still somewhat acceptable um, in close-up combat. I would even argue we could get more extreme, drop the heat sink and get more armor. Ah, I think that is a more uh, that is a medium build. Okay, so. The idea here is LRM 15s to um, three um, LRM ammunition, so that is 360 rounds. We're um, using 30 rounds, so that is essentially 12 um, full iterations of our LRM 15s. We're going with 150 damage anywhere on the map, which is good. We can keep him back. And even if that is almost exhausted, we still got some firepower. The one medium, la uh, medium laser alone is not threatening, but the two small lasers plus the melee attack that you could have, that actually becomes a bit more threatening. We could go, the mech has a decent speed, we could go all the way into small lasers, but I think all of that is uh, fine. Overall, an okay build. I wanted to show, uh, showcase some LRM boats in the Centurion is one of the first mechs where you can build a decent LRM boat. So now the big question is how can we get all of this to work? So blackjack needs repair. The other things need repair so this is 10 days and this is 29 days un uh, until we got a full a full lance uh, to even work with 29 days and that is how much travel we have ahead of us and just from a funds perspective 1.3 million i think we're fine we could go um for the um for the flashpoint here why not i it's an interesting flashpoint campaign two stars and i know that we need heavy mix uh, well that's potentially not going to work can we from a filtering perspective uh, look at something around one and a half is this here a good one portland 24 days world that's not bad that whole thing here is not bad either to be honest i actually think that we should go here because it's one and a half just fits the requirement we can theoretically start the flashpoint even with um, a lower uh, with a lower um, deployment so that's fine we can set the course of course, we're again going to be really short on cash, but so is the life of the Swan Song crew. We, for once, cannot afford that luxurious lifestyle of ours. The 
last mission, the salvage, that was really, really, really good. Unfortunately, it ended up uh, costing us the next mission. There was another pirate mission, but yeah, I, I wouldn't want it to stay in the system for 31 days uh, to wait. And I was too greedy to get kind of the mo uh, medium uh, mechs in. They were just too delicious. All right, fantastic. Almost uh, there. Nothing even happens during our travel. Like I said, normally there are a couple of random events and I was almost hoping that we would get some that would give us more tech points so that we can repair faster. Got a new financial report for you, Commander. All right, current funds. Not good. So... We're at 34 morale for now. Let's keep it here. And like for only 100,000 more, we would get another morale. Let's try that. I still want to push morale. Those upgrades you asked for? We're almost completely out of cash. Of course, we're again completely, almost completely broke. So in terms of engineering ship upgrades, what do we have at our disposal? So we could go for the final drive system, but 700,000 is a bit too pricey. 450, likewise. 270 is more like it. We need extra tech points. Plus one morale, that's not bad either, having that launch. That also spawns quite a few um, events that can further increase morale. So 270,000 means we would not be able to make ends uh, meet if needed, but I think we can still sell some stuff, so that's fine. And since the month just has turned, uh, we still got quite a bit of uh, time left over. Good, we arrived at the system. Let's just take a look. Uh, first of all, at the store and then at the rest. So nothing completely out of the ordinary here. A couple of really good guns. I will give them that. AC-10 and AC-20 Plus is pretty damn good. I like that. But out of our league, can't afford that. Now the even more important part is what are the contracts? I want pirate contracts. Lots and lots of pirate contracts. Besides, of course, the flashpoint. Good, and here we are. So, 700,000, so that is fantastic. That one here is another pretty damn good mission, 1 million. And it runs against some institution that I don't care so 1 million is definitely oh fantastic for once the local government is not fighting against the pirates that is good 700,000 that one is not going to happen yeah okay so the disadvantages were working a lot for the planetary government which stinks because that's really not that great but we got um, quite a few, like two school missions, one and a half for 700,000. Like, that's a no brainer. 
two and a half school mission for a million. Uh, that is fantastic. Escort mission Tundra. We're definitely going to do that. And from the mech bay, we got our Griffin uh, ready to go. Uh, Centurion is just on kind of uh, on the edge of um, getting ready as well. So we got a new Lance, uh, Firestarter, uh, Vindicator, Blackjack, and finally the Griffin. Griffin uh, is the one with the communication system and quite a bit of firepower, 200. Yep, that's, I think that is the most firepower. And you can see 200 uh, armor on top of what the Vindicator has. So that's the advantage of like going a bit higher. Uh, the Vindicator is well built for what we're trying to do. Like I'm, I'm happy with how that has turned out. But wait for the Hunchback and uh, wait for the Centurion once they are ready. We will switch to a full medium uh, strike force. Thank you for watching, guys. It's been a long mission, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. See you all in our next run. Bye bye.